Welcome back, everyone. And uh, I'm delighted to, to welcome uh, to our stage uh, the chair of the World Energy Council, uh, Jean-Marie Doge. And uh, we've asked uh, Jean-Marie to give his reflections with regard to the last three days. I'd like to hand over to Jean-Marie now. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Arthur. Well, m my very first um, remark is to say that uh, in, I have a uh, strong feeling that these um, three days have, have been extremely successful and extremely informative and, and, and useful to, to, to many. So my, my very first uh, uh, reaction is, first of all, to thank uh, Kazakhstan for its uh, generous hosting all the teams. And of course, with a very, very special thanks to the president of Kazakhstan, who has honored by his presence this, um, this uh, meeting. And, uh, and show the interest that uh, was given to the, uh, all these energy issues. Uh, my thanks also, of course, would extend to all the ministerial presidents, which are very numerous. Uh, I would like just to see, and, and from which we have received also a number of messages, including the Minister of Energy for Saudi Arabia and many other ones. And, and also, uh, 120 countries having participated by the one way or the other, either as speaker or participants. So it, it is, first of all, a very great success. And, and really, it's a perfect illustration. And it, it, it really highlights how important it is uh, to have the gathering of such a community and a change between people regardless of countries or sector. It's, it's extremely promising because, as, as you know, I will come back to that. My, my, having an in-depth and open dialogue on those very, very crucial issues is of essence. Um, from the three days, I, I cannot but, uh, but, of course, only mention a few points, but there are so many that uh, I don't have time to do that. And, of course, uh, we will have occasion, I suppose, in the, in the future to, to come back to all of this. Just a few remarks. Um, first, I have noticed and I, I have a certain feeling that uh, urgency is coming, is becoming a priority for action. Uh, of course, uh, uh, many, many things uh, have happened that create that sense of urgency. But it seems more and more apparent for a number of reasons that the cost of doing nothing or doing things too late is increasing dramatically. And uh, only to take the, uh, the illustration of the, of, of the last SPP uh, climate uh, report, I think the horizon at which major impact of global warming will impact our all our, ourselves in, in the deep dimension is approaching to a degree that people are getting more and more conscious, conscious that it is very urgent to act and to enter into a more active phase. As it also appears that uh, measures that we have initiated so far is far from producing enough result in, in due time. Um, a second, and, and this sense of urgency is slightly expressed by, by many and, and comes from very different horizons, including the finance community that to a certain degree make, in, make gentle pressure on corporations and companies uh, so that they, they take action and, and integrate the, uh, their their transition policy reaction into the evaluation of uh, the risk which the companies involves. In a nutshell, the cost of doing nothing, nothing is getting bigger and bigger every day and urgency to act is there. Second uh, impression or, or sentiment I have, it's extremely, it has been for me extremely comforting to see 
such a diversity of situation and people who now do act uh, and commit to bring solutions. To that extent, the regional part of, of, the, of, the, of the sessions have been extremely informative to this respect. Um, well, just to illustrate, I, I think that many of us have been impressed and have discovered how much, for example, Kazakhstan ambition is, is big and how much Kazakhstan is engaged into facing the energy transition and take um, uh, very uh, important actions at the regional level. And this really uh, confirmed many of our strong feeling, including the one that the regional aspects of, of um, cooperation is, is essential. Third uh, remark, even if not always expressed so bluntly, but there is a fact that the speed of decarbonization still is at the agenda, or I would say more, uh, still remain uh, some sort of concern. Several times it has been mentioned, the fact that we have several and many actions to take at the same time which to a certain degree may create some pro problematics, but also we have to do that. Uh, just not to mention many, but just the fact that investments and actions are necessary simply to relaunch a number of supply and supply energy at short term. And, um, and so at the same time, we have to act to maintain a secure flow of energy now, while at the same time investing also in further decarbonization, in, in further action that will have to respond to a longer term or mid to long term um, uh, challenge. And uh, having those two priorities at the same time may be sometimes a bit uh, difficult or complex. So this question has, of course, to be, to be managed properly because none of the two parts, the present and, and the future, can be uh, neglected in no way. Fourth element, without entering into any details, but the, human, the humanizing energy issue, and it was a, a very, very good um, conclusion I had from those discussions, is really a shared uh, concept by all of us everywhere. There is no, it has been expressed in, in many, many different uh, case, but uh, looking at all the aspects of the, of the uh, human consequence on energy transition, as well as embarking into, into our policy reflection, implementation, all the levels, including at the, including down to the, not only the community, the cities, but also even individual. So uh, humanizing energy really, well, which is, as you know, one of our favorite theme for the moment, really seems to be at the center of, of um, the success of our energy transition. And as was said very, very often, there will be no smooth transition without taking the greatest care of the human aspects of the energy evolution. Another point, which is a surprise for no one, but it has been maybe expressed with even more insistence is that cooperation, uh, just to take uh, some words I heard, cooperation, open-mindedness, trust, uh, generosity, transparency, in a nutshell, the need for enlarged cooperation and to keep open spaces where dialogue can be very openly and frankly conducted between, between the actors of the, of the energy uh, 
industry and from with their customer, with the governments, with uh, the other sectors involved. So this um, necessity for a greater cooperation to discuss what are the problems, how to solve them, all this is becoming even more important every day and has to be conducted at each and every level, both regionally, locally, uh, at national level, international level, regionally, everywhere. This is not a, a small challenge, but it is something that is absolutely necessary. Um, there, there, there was, of course, also many other points that was uh, mentioned, uh, can't be specific, uh, any of them. But in a way, the industry is now in the front row of, of, of bringing solutions. Uh, and it is its responsibility, and um, um, I have been encouraged to see that uh, all the parts of the uh, industry, of the energy industry, and not only industry, but also the government's level, the industry, the, industry, the customer, and also other sectors are now really engaged. Um, of course, it needs, uh, there are still many, many things to, to be done. And I, I think I also listened to some sort of a call to governments to provide uh, a consistent framework and objective uh, to, 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 to help all the parties involved to bring the solution and the part of the solution. Um, I think there was also, and maybe it's a reflection of mine, but I, I don't think, I think it's a shared one. There is also, the need to have the proper instrument to efficiently measure the specific impact of each and every uh, element of uh, either energy policy or, or action at, at any, any level. And we need that the specific instrument to make sure that uh, we know what works and where and how and what doesn't work so that we can learn even more from 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 each other. Uh, I, I don't think I would be more more. I can go very much further on. Uh, I think the necessity of collaboration, the necessity to open permanent dialogue where actual and real issues are discussed in details and in, in their practicality with very large and different community. Uh, uh, and, and, and various stakeholders is, is really a necessity, as it is to take the greatest care to the impact on on, on people of what is uh, in, what is the implication of, of the evolution we are now confronted to, and and to that degree, I think the uh, World Energy Council is uh, has a very important role to play, and at least is is at a place and is positioned in a way. The, where we can actually contribute to this. Um, I would just, just like to finish, but to say that uh, there has been, uh, I, think, I think, very interesting and very fascinating discussion during these three days. I think we learned a lot. It has uh, also been the, uh, an opportunity for the World Energy Council to, to, to start, to take, to announce and to launch a number of initiatives. You have seen the um, you have seen the disclosure of our last uh, publication of the trilemma, which of course will raise a lot of discussion and an interesting debate, as uh, the instrument as such seems to to be um, a very valid one, and of course may be used in a very different manner and enriched also in the future. You have also seen the cooperation that has been initiated uh, between uh, with the uh, with the with the PBC under the, the, the theme of both of the humanizing um, uh, transition but also to to has one way of improving our impact on on the necessity to improve literacy uh, people will people customer are, will be and more and more confronted to choice but this choice 
will be done only if they are properly and, and, and neutrally and confidently informed so that uh, uh, literacy is also a, a mission of us. I cannot but finish with uh, reminding that uh, in October next year, uh, there will be the, the, 50, the 25th Congress of, the, of our association of the World Energy Council of the, of, with these immense networks. Uh, I think uh, it will come at a perfect time to draw conclusion and engage discussion on, on the, way the state of the new normality as it is uh, presently uh, appearing. So thank you very much to all. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much for all the information that what you have uh, given to all of us during those two years. And I think for me, it's extremely encouraging for the future to see that uh, uh, such kind of, of uh, open-minded discussion really are fruitful. And, and there are ample rooms for that to be amplified in the future. Thank you. Jean-Marie, thank you very much for a powerful and comprehensive summary uh, of the last three days and a call to action to all of us uh, as we go forward. It's just left to me on behalf of the moderators, uh, Etna, John, Chokan and myself, uh, to express my thanks to all of the moderators, all of the panelists, and everyone, the two and a half thousand people that registered over the course of the last three days for attending what has been, I think, a fantastic, comprehensive, and I think in a way changing the nature of our debate around energy slash social transition. And in that context, I do think we have done absolute justice to the theme for this year of energy for better lives. So congratulations to everyone for putting that agenda together. Behind the scenes here, there are an awful lot of individuals. There's the production team, there's the team in the council that has worked diligently and has been you know, working very hard over the last few weeks to put all of this together. So on behalf of all of us as the moderators, thank you to the team, thank you to the moderators for all the efforts that are put in and all of the uh, late nights and early mornings that have been put in more recently over the course of the last three days. So once again, thank you for attending. As uh, Jean-Marie mentioned, uh, please note your calendar for next October for the uh, 25th uh, World Energy Congress. Uh, I have been told that the videos from each of the sessions will be up on the World Energy Council website over the course of the next week. Uh, please go and look, download, refresh your minds around some of the great discussions that have happened over the course of the last three days. And again, the Humanizing Energy series uh, that we've talked about a lot actually over the last three days will be there. They're there now uh, and I would certainly encourage you. I went to have a look at some of them over the last day or two and as I said, I found that very refreshing in terms of making my ambition to be an active energy consumer in 2021 and 2022. Once again, my thanks, and we look forward to meeting with you in person next year in St. Petersburg. Energy created life. Ever since the dawn of civilization, humanity explored ways of harnessing energy for its benefit. Energy enlightened us fused technological revolutions and shaped the world as we know it. The ways in which energy is used, traded, supplied and produced are shifting fast and fundamentally, bringing unprecedented challenges and opportunities. Technological advancement drives energy systems to become decarbonized, digitalized, decentralized bringing consumers to the forefront. We are entering a new era in global energy, one of energy for humanity. This is the theme of the 25th World Energy Congress. The flagship event of the World Energy Council has leaders gather to work towards an inclusive, sustainable energy future for all. 
For almost a century, the Triennial World Energy Congress has been a unique space for the global energy community to catalyze new cooperations and forge new pathways in the energy transition. With around 5,000 delegates and 18,000 attendees, the Congress connects and inspires leaders and practitioners from around the world. Ministers, C-suite executives, experts and academia, young energy leaders, the Congress hosts the full spectrum of the energy sector and its value chain. The 25th World Energy Congress will take place in Russia in the beautiful city of St. Petersburg. It is organized by the World Energy Council, the Russian National Committee of the World Energy Council and the Ross Congress Foundation. Welcome to the 25th World Energy Congress. Energy for Humanity.